right, today got a Honda Civic in the shop. I'm doing a bunch of work to it. And one of the things I got to do is the rear brakes. Figured I'd bring you guys along. So let's get to work. All right, now this is going to be an eighth generation Civic. So this is going to cover like 2006 to 2011 ish, right in there. Uh, and as you can see, this has rear disc brakes. Some Civics have drum brakes. So this is not going to be the same procedure if you have drum brakes. So just be aware of that. And as you can see, because I'm doing a bunch of other work, I already have this thing lifted up and on jack stands. So if you want to see how to safely do that, I have a video on replacing the rear shocks on one of these vehicles. So you can check that out and you can see exactly how to lift it up and where to put the jack stands and how to work on this thing safe. All right, before we get started, you can see I have the parking brake off. And we got the cap to the master cylinder loose. And that fluid looks kind of dark. Might uh, tell the owner probably be a good idea to flush this out. All right, first thing I'm going to do, take some brake cleaner. I'm going to hose this thing down. All right, we got to loosen up this brake line right here. And where's the bolt? Right there. Uh, we need a 12 millimeter socket. We'll pop that out. And I'm just going to take my impact, pop it out real quick. There we go. And then we can just kind of pull it down and out of the way. Now it's up out of the way. And next, to get this brake caliper apart, we're going to pop this bolt out. And where's the one on the bottom? Right here. These are both also 12 millimeters. We'll just take those out. All right, I'm just going to use my impact. We'll pop these out. You can use a, a ratchet and a socket also. There's that one. See if I can get this one. Now we should be able to take it off if it's not jammed in there too much. Come on, you can do it. Whoops. Ah. Yeah, try not to drop it like that. All right, and then we'll just take a little hook, put it through here, and hang it like that. There. Now there's no strain on the hose. And if we take a look at our brake pads, you can see there's some material left on the outside here. And on the inside, we're, oh, it's just a hair from the wear indicator. On the other side, it was actually hitting the wear indicator. So you can see these are, they've, re they've reached their limit. The inside tends to wear slightly more than the outside one. So you always gotta, if you're gonna inspect it, always look at that inside pad. And while I'm thinking of it, the pads on these older Accords and uh, Civics, especially these 537s, that's the uh, the model number for these, or the part number, they tend to wear out faster than the front brakes, so you definitely got to keep an eye on your rear brakes on these older ones. All right, next, let's pop the bracket out. We need to loosen up this bolt right here and this one right here. We're going to need a 14 millimeter socket or a wrench to do it. All right, normally I like to use a nice long wrench like this. I could put it in there and just pop it loose, lots of leverage, but you can see I don't have a lot of room in here. And then this is kind of in the way. You can't, there's not a whole lot of room to maneuver this thing around. So we'll see, I have a little bit longer uh, ratchet right here with a socket. We'll see if we can pop it loose. Okay, that's not too bad. And the bottom one, we'll see if we can get it the same way. Oh, that one's a bit tighter. All right, I got them loose. Now I'll just pop them out. There's one. And there we go. All right, now we got to get the rotor screws out there. There we go. You can see this is my favorite tool to get them out. This vessel number three impact screwdriver. These are number three uh, screws, so they do fit perfect. And I like to just hammer them and it usually will loosen them up. Now sometimes if I think they're rusted in there and it's going to be really difficult, um, I'll use a number two like this one because the point will get in there 
if, I don't know if you can see that, but the, the edges of the screwdriver are not even touching the screw. Only the center is touching it. So I can hit it like that and transfer all the force right down the middle of the screw. And sometimes I'll just whack it like that a couple times. And then I'll take the uh, correct one and zip them out. But a lot of times if I do that, it'll loosen the bond. Because that's all we need to do. We need to loosen the rust bond between that screw and the inside there. But usually this is all it takes. Here, let me move you back so you can see. That one's loose. You can see, there we go. Usually they'll actually stick to the screwdriver and I have to yank them off. And if you look close, there's no damage to those screws either. Now sometimes you might have to hit this to get it loose. There we go, you can see it's loose and we can take it off. Because sometimes you have a rust ring will develop right inside there and it'll basically bond itself to it. Alright, one thing we want to pay attention to is there's some shims right here. I don't know if you can see that. These little shims kind of slip right around. There's one here and there's one here. Just want to make sure they're still intact and in good shape. You can see we'll just hit those with the wire brush real quick, but they're fine. But we don't want to lose those and we want to make sure they're not damaged. And while we're right here, we're going to pop this uh, spring out. And right back here, we'll just put a screwdriver in here like that. We should be able to just pop it out like that. And there we go. We have new ones, so... We'll go ahead and replace them seeing as we have brand new. Alright, as you can see from this little plus sign right here, that means we have to spin this caliper back in. We can't just press it in like a normal one. And that's because, I don't know if you can see it right here where I'm tapping, the uh, parking brake is attached to it. And so that's why it has this design. And this right here, if I can grab it, it mates up to the pin right, where is it? Right there. So you can see the pin right there. That mates up right inside there, so when we spin this back in, we just have to have it lined up perpendicular like that, so it lines up with the pin on the new pad. So as you can see, it's perfectly perpendicular or even like that compared to this side right here. And once we spin it back in, we need to make sure it looks the same when we're done. Now many times, especially if you live in the rust belt, this boot right here will stick to the piston. And so once you start spinning it in, this thing gets all twisted up. To prevent that, what I do is I take a little bit of uh, silicone paste like this. I put it on the tip of my screwdriver. And then I just go in here and just lightly put a thin little coat just right around here like that. I just kind of get up under the boot and spin it around like that. And what that does is that prevents it from sticking. It won't hurt it. It's not going to hurt rubber. It's actually good for it. So I'll do that, and then we can, uh, you get our tool, we're going to need a special tool, and we'll spin that back in. Alright, to spin our piston back in, we're going to need a caliper wind back tool like this. Now, this, these are all, I think, made by the same company in Taiwan. This is made in Taiwan. This one is a 22 piece. I've seen 23 pieces. I think they're even more than that. I've seen 17 and 18 piece ones, too. I say get the, get the one from whatever manufacturer that has the most pieces available. That way you have the most adapters. Now we'll need this one right here. This one spins it in right-handed which pretty much all the Hondas are like that. This one will spin it on left-handed for other you know vehicles that need that. And then if I can get this off, this is on there with a magnet, see? This is this goes right here, it's number M or letter M, not number, but it just pops on there like that and that will adapt it um, to this and it works perfectly. And then we just need this plate right here, and we'll just flip that on and put it on our caliper. And these kits are cheap. They're only like 20 or 30 bucks, so they're not too expensive. And so we just need to put it on there like that. And we'll put it in here. And make sure the holes line up, and then we can spin this back like that. And then it puts pressure right on here. And now, to get it started, they're kind of hard sometimes. It takes a lot of effort. And you gotta 
you gotta really go after it and keep this tight but then once it starts then it's fairly easy and by taking the uh, the spring out like we did it makes it a little easier when the springs in the way a little more difficult to do these All right, I don't know if you can see, it's still sticking out a little bit. So I'm gonna go in a little bit further. Let's see how we're lined up. Okay, it's off just by a hair. I don't know if you can see, but it's just like that barely and, whoops so what we can do we just take this plate off we don't need this just to turn it a little bit and then we can put it in there just get it lined up and we can just turn it a hair maybe a little more how's that look trying to look through the viewfinder trying to do this. So you guys are right in my way. I think that looks pretty good. We're going to go with that. And anytime we're winding pistons back in, we got to keep an eye on our brake fluid and make sure it doesn't spill everywhere. Normally that only happens if somebody's topped it off in between brake pad changes. All right, seeing as we're right here, I'm just going to hit this piston face with a wire brush for a little bit and clean it up as best I can. And then I'm also going to hit the mating surface right here, the contact points on the back side. So I'll just clean those up and we'll be right back. Okay, now that we got that all cleaned up, let's go ahead and clean this up. And we want to clean this up because anytime there's a, if there's a little bit of rust, now this one's not bad, but if there's a little bit of rust between here and the rotor, that can throw the rotor off a little bit. And then next thing you know, you have high spots on your rotor and then you have pulsating brakes. So we want to avoid that by cleaning this up. All right, to clean this up, I'm going to use some air tools. This is one of the few times that I use air tools. I'll use this uh, special tool right here to go around the studs to clean it up. And then I'll use this to clean up in between like that as best I can. And then I'll follow it up with a coarse 3M pad if I need to, to knock down any high spots that are right in here that are really difficult to get with air tools. But uh, we're going to be wearing eye and especially ear protection. We don't want to hurt ourselves. All right, there it's cleaned up. It's impossible to get every nook and cranny. We just do the best we can. Now, we'll just hit it with some brake cleaner. I can need a new can. Yeah, I'm gonna get some more. All right, now we wanna protect this so that it doesn't rust again. And we can do it a couple ways. We can put some kind of film on there or um, or we can put anti-seize or something like that. I'm just gonna use some fluid film and we'll just spray it on there. We're good to go. And for all the brake parts lubricant, I'm gonna use the Ceramic Extreme Purple. I like this stuff. And while I'm thinking of it, we're just gonna put a tiny amount on the face of this piston right here and on the contact points on the back side here. That way we won't forget and we know it's done. All right, for parts, this is the setup I'm going with. Centric Premium uh, Rotor. Where's the part number in here? Come on. 
All right. There's our rotor. You can see this is a premium one, so it has a finish on there. And for brake pads, we're going to go with Akibono Proact. This is my go-to setup. This is what I like to use. There's the part number for this vehicle. A lot of Hondas use this part number. Um, yeah, these are ceramic, just like the originals. And if you didn't know, Akibono actually makes a lot of the Honda brake pads. So if you go with Akibono, there's a good chance that this is actually the original equipment manufacturer anyway. And like I mentioned before, we're going with new hardware too. Okay, before I forget, I'm going to get this spring in. And you just put it in the back side just like we took it out, and then just pop the other side in. Sometimes they can be a pain to do. I can't do it holding the camera. But yeah, we'll just set it in place like that, and we'll just kind of pop it through to the other side. Alright, there's our rotor opened up. You can see it has the coating on there to prevent rust on the hat and on the edges right here. Uh, it says it's uh, ready to install without doing anything, but I will usually, I'll hit it with some brake clean first to make sure there's nothing on it. Okay, now that the rotor's cleaned up, we just need to make sure that when we put it on, we put the holes for our rotor screws back where they belong, right there. And we just put it on like that. Now we can put our screws in there. You can leave them off if you want to. It's my habit to put them back. And I just put the tiniest amount of anti-seize right on the tip there to prevent it from uh, seizing up in there. Alright, now that we got all that stuff ready to go, we've got to clean up this caliper bracket. So we'll just peel these rattle clips off, or anti-rattle clips I should say. And uh, now we just got to clean up that surface right there, this surface right here. And we'll go ahead and clean up this too so it sits flush. All right, now that we got it all cleaned up, I had to finish this up with a wire wheel. Couldn't quite get in there with my angle dime grinder. But that's usually what happens. But now we'll just take the pins out. You can see there's one of them. And we'll clean it off. And we'll put brand new silicone grease on there. That's the only thing I use on these pins. And if you notice, one is pin A, one's pin B. One's smooth, one has grooves. And sometimes on some of these Hondas, they have a rubber tip in there. And that's why it's especially important you use the right um, brake grease on your stuff. Otherwise, that tip, if it swells up, it's going to cause this to stick in there, and then you'll have a, a stuck caliper. So we just want a thin coat. We don't need too much. And then we'll put it back in there. And we want this boot to be kind of in the middle in a neutral position. We don't want it to be smashed like that. We don't want it to be sticking way out like this. Usually you can just burp it and get it about right where it's supposed to be like that. I recommend doing one pin at a time so you don't mix them up. You can see this is the pin with the flat sides on it. Sometimes they're flat, sometimes they're grooves. A thin coat is all we need. Put it in there, burp it, good to go. And you can see our pins move nice. So we want to make sure they move freely. All right, now I'm going to take just a tiny amount. I mean, very light and put it on there. In fact, that may be a little too much. 
and then we'll put the uh, anti-rattle clips in there. And you can see they kind of just snap into place just like that. Oop. One on the top, one on the bottom. Now this thing's ready to go. All right, I like to just put another tiny amount just right here, wherever the brake pads are going to go. Of course, I say tiny and then I put a bunch on. Just a very thin amount. All right, now that we got this bracket ready to go, we can just kind of drop it into place and then take our bolts and try to get them started. See how good I am reaching around the camera like this. Looks like I got one. Once you get the top one, bottom one's slightly easier. And of course, before we put this uh, rotor on, we made sure that those shims were still in place. Alright, now we can just go ahead and get them snug. And then we'll do our final torque. Alright, those two caliper bracket bolts are 54 foot-pounds, so we'll see if we can't sneak our torque wrench in there and get them torqued down properly. Alright, as you can see, I got the new brake pads here. This one with the uh, wear indicator, that's going to go on the inside on the bottom like that. So make sure you put these pads on on the right side because they do. the other side would be a mirror image. So you can put them on wrong and inadvertently put this with the um, wear indicator on the top. But we want it on the, on the leading edge. So as the wheel goes around like this, that's the first place it catches. So it's going to be on the bottom on the inside like that. So we'll go ahead and get these installed. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop this shim off like that. I'm going to put a tiny bit of brake grease right on the back side of that and then reinstall it. This is what Honda recommends. Okay, so as you can see that's a very thin coating. We'll just snap them back on and I'll get the other one. Now Honda also recommends the contact points on this side be um, greased up and the ears right here. Now you can either do that on the pad itself or like we did already, we already greased it up here and then on the contact points there. So I'm not going to put any additional grease on the pads. Alright, now we can just kind of pop them in. Sometimes we got to press this anti-rattle clip down a little bit to get it in like that and we get our other one in just like that yeah you just kind of press that down sometimes because it wants to pop up when they're brand new but there now they're both installed and obviously it goes without saying the shim should be on the outside here and the actual pad material should be touching the rotor but I guess I have to say that because people have put these things on backwards Alright, now we can slide our caliper. We can just take it and slide it back on. We just got to remember that this pin, where is it? This pin right here is going to slide into that groove. So if this is off, if we didn't, we don't have it in enough, or if it's cockeyed, then it's not going to go in. So we don't want to force it. If we feel some resistance, we'll back it out. And if we have to, we'll spin this in a little bit. Um, I believe it's out a little too far, and I left that on purpose. In case we have to spin it in, I'll show you how. Yeah, see, I don't know if you can see that. It's just a little too tight. We don't have quite enough room. So we're going to have to spin that in a little bit. So we'll just take our tool and we'll spin it in just a little bit more. Yeah, 
I don't have a good angle with you right in the way. How's that look? Whoop, don't knock our pad out. A little bit more. rather difficult with you right in my way. I think that looks good. Let's see if it fits now. Oops. It's kind of a balancing act to get it over that pin and then you got to get it past the two uh, sliders too, sliding pins. There. Now we're in place. Now we can put our bolts in. one all right now we can snug these up now sometimes this is going to turn right here and you can see it can you see how it's turning well sometimes it's turning so what we need we need a 17 millimeter wrench like that and we'll just grab that one now we can spin it all over And we'll do the same thing for the bottom. All right, now these two bolts, they're only gonna be 17 foot-pounds, so we can hit them, make sure they're 17. Uh, we might have already tightened them up to 17. You can see I barely had to tighten and got it to 18. So 17 is not that much. We already took them both to 17. I can verify the bottom, but I'm sure it is. Yeah, they're already 17. Now these two are a common area where people strip these things out. So be very careful, 17 is not that much. We gotta use our brain, not our muscle on these two right here. All right, the last thing we have to do is reconnect our brake line. Just remember we need to kind of pull it up and around so that it's on this side. It needs to be on this side of the bracket. And then this bolt right here, it's a little bit shorter than these two bolts. They look very similar, don't mix them up. Now we can get this in here and then we can just get it snugged up. Snug. All right, now we'll take a second look over our work. We've got our brake line reconnected. Make sure that we did not disconnect our parking brake. We got these two bolts for the caliper in. We got the caliper brackets torqued down. And we got our pads in and we got them the right way and we got our indicators on the right. And we got our screws back in for our rotor. I think we're good to go. And let's make sure we're not forgetting anything like, whoops, like the light that I just dropped. Luckily it's from Astro, so real strong made of wood and of course we want to verify our fluid level is still good and we still at a good level and we'll just pump up the brakes a few times so we don't have any scares when we first drive this thing usually takes a few good presses and then we're good and then we'll apply the parking brake to make sure it's good one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, right, eight, nine, right there is good. It should be between eight and 10 clicks. So it feels good right there. And you can see with the parking brake applied, it's on there. I can't move it now. That's a good sign. And we'll put this cap back on. And I think I'm gonna be doing a brake flush on this. Maybe I'll film it. Well, there you go. I'm done with this one. If you want to see a brake fluid service video on this vehicle, let me know in the comments. And as always, if the video helped you out or you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.